So beyond the cool factor, because certainly the two well-known quad mechs in the inner sphere, the Scorpion and the Goliath, there is some pretty interesting cool factor. But tactically, tactically on the table, what advantage do they have? What advantage would they have? And how can we utilize them? And as a subnote, we're going to ask the question, we're going to explore traditional wargaming table, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get terrain versus hex map. The distinction between the two, playing quad mechs on that aspect. And I'm not talking about modeling for advantage, physically modeling for advantage, but utilizing the fact that it is 3D and there are models involved. So the primary advantage in in my mind, again, beyond coolness of a quad mech, is the fact that stability. You have more, literally more armor, survivability. You've got four legs instead of two. If one of those legs gets blown off, you're still in the game. You're not prone. Um, Second to that, there's greater armor on the legs. So that base is spread out. It's going to have more mobility. The downside, of course, and part of this is play style, but also the the weapon points, the weapon mounts. Because again, in Battletech, tonnage is the deciding factor. And location is the deciding factor. The internal aspects of your torso of a mech, that's taken up with a lot of key systems, which is why we see weapons ported out, pushed out to the arms. There's less critical key systems that take up slots. When you play a quad mech, you're cutting down on the potential slots for your weapons. I mean, look at the Goliath. Look at the Scorpion for the tonnage. They are a little bit undergunned. Uh, Counter to that would say, okay, I don't have dozens of weapon systems, but I can pretty much fire everything every single turn. And again, that mounts nicely on the fact that I have the stability of four legs. But what you're missing out on, okay, physical attacks. You're going to be kicking. You can kick backwards too, but you're missing out on the hands to punch, the arms to punch. That's a one in six chance at hitting the head um, if you can get that close to the target, which arguably is is going to happen, not just in city fight, city tech, but it is possible to get close and smash things out. That's a disadvantage. Manipulation is also a disadvantage. Depending on the mission you're playing, a lot of mechs have arms, but they don't have hands. That could be a downside. We can counter that and say, well, look, in a proper lance, I mean, I guess you could be the ultimate fanboy and just run all quads, but you're going to have a mix of other mechs, other support elements, especially if you're playing multiple lances. So in that lance, if you have a scorpion in one lance, if you have a goliath in the other lance, then it'll work out because hands and punching will lead to other aspects. And certainly kicks can be pretty savage, especially on the tonnage for the goliath. So does someone want to get close enough to punch? We have survivability. Now let's talk about Um, The idea of the advantages you gain based on the rules and based on the gaming table. So in Battletech, if you have partial concealment and cover, um, you know, if you're behind a building or if there's certain levels of terrain, if you're playing with that and your legs are hidden, they're obscured, when any incoming shots that would roll for the legs, they're going to get transferred to that target. So if it's a building, it'll take some damage. If it's uh, some large rock structures, hills, the dirt will eat the shots. That makes positioning really, really big in Battletech, where if I'm facing you, my my maximum armor facing forward, especially if I've got some long-range stuff like a longbow or an archer or even a marauder sitting there with the PPCs and the autocannon, and I can eliminate your ability to hit my legs, that's big. Well, a quad mech is four legs. You get that into the right type of terrain to block those attacks and you're hauled down and you've just got all your armor bubbles on that center torso. That's, that's a very, very powerful firing platform that is going to eat, you know, almost one in three shots every single turn. That's huge. I mean, eat as in, it's not going to get transferred. Don't overlook that. So uh, certainly as a mech warrior, there are differences in understanding tactically how you're going to pilot that mech compared potentially to other mechs. So now we're going to look at um, 
the table itself. If you're playing on a traditional wargaming table, one of the challenges becomes dealing with elevation, dealing with what's cover, what's not cover, what's the positioning of the mech, just how far in are you into the woods. And from this, um, physically, what you see is often what you can shoot at. So if we take uh, first mech that comes to mind, Wolverine, because we were exploring the Wolverine um, yesterday, and I posted up on my Twitter feed the most annoying Wolverine in the inner sphere. My, my best, best Battletech buddy. He plays this Wolverine all the time. Um, the model looks sexy, looks amazing. But combined with that, and it, it's no fault, he's an amazing Battletech player, this Wolverine does a lot more damage than it should. Yes, he's playing tactically sound. Um, yes, his positioning is flawless. But the machine spirit, the mech warrior, whoever that mech warrior is, is just doing amazing in that mech. If we physically look, so imagine there's a, a building. You can have that Wolverine there, and it's partially concealed. I'll still be able to shoot at it, but it's concealed. You can take a Scorpion model, put it one hex away behind the building. The Scorpion model is completely concealed. Now, I'm not talking about... Um, I'm not talking about modeling for advantage. I'm not talking about making your scorpions so low to the ground. On a side note, um, modeling for advantage, a good example, because it is part of wargaming culture. It, it can happen. Warhammer 40,000, a couple of editions ago, it's a sci-fi game. And Games Workshop is always changing the rules because they want to force you to buy new stuff. And the cover system was changed. The previous cover system for 40k and again this is going back a, a couple editions was very much it was very similar to BattleTech where if you were in this terrain piece it's counted as light cover so if your model your space marines your infantry are in there you get light cover you get a cover save if they're outside of the boundaries then there is no cover save well games workshop changes it and says it's all WYSIWYG so now you got to get down and look, I mean, it, it did help with the immersion. You got to get down and look. And if you see a model and it's obscured by any piece of the terrain. So if I've got my Space Marine Heavy Bolter ready, rocking, and there's a tree in front of him, that model gets cover. You get cover. I understand what they were trying to do. But you had a whole legion of edgelords and neckbeards now literally ripping apart their models to gain a cover advantage, a, a Carnifex. So one of the armies in 40K, Tyranids, think gigantic space bugs. Okay, these gigantic, gigantic um, space bugs. Think Starship Troopers. And a Carnifex is this massive, living, battering ram, huge, huge space bug. You know, 50, 60 feet tall. Massive. So you had people ripping apart the Carnifex bug and just, like, putting the head modeled on a hole in the ground. They took the base, made it a hole in the ground, put the head there like it was busting out of the ground uh, and making it look somewhat decent and be like, whoa, this is a customized army. No, bro, you were remodeling all your Carnifexes so that no matter where they go on the table, you're getting massive cover saves, which previously was hard to do against such a model. Okay, side rant over, back to quad mechs. That could happen, potentially, if you're going full WYSIWYG on a gaming table where you don't really have elevations, level 1, level 2, level 3, it's more how you're moving and, and physically what you see, then especially if it's City Fight, and I've played my Scorpion in City Fight, side counters, I always play a Scorpion, play it a lot, it becomes even more beast mode, it becomes even more potent. Goliath, not so much, uh, even if you have the reseen, unseen, or you have the original unseen Goliath's like a giant ad at. I mean, it's it's big. It's going to stand out. But that those are the slight changes. C comparing that to a hex map, and a hex map, I should say, is a lot more fluid and a lot easier to understand because everything's clearly marked. Level one, level two, level three. Utilizing quad mechs, um, I would encourage. I would encourage. I I probably recommend because there's a lot of new BattleTech players to my channel here. I want to welcome you. There has never been a better time to play Battletech. It is, it is fantastic. I would pick up a Scorpion at some point in my collection because for the battle value and its tonnage, you'll be able to get it into your list, play around with it, still have enough for battle value left over for your other toys. 
Um, and likewise, it's, it's quirky. It's fun to play. It's something to play every now and then, even if you have other favorite machines like the Firestarter, it's just quirky enough that it will make it to the tabletop. 